It's time for the June blocks for our Civil War Sew Along. We're using the Barbara Brackman book called Civil War Sampler. And this month, there are five Sundays in June. So we're going to be doing five blocks. Those blocks are number 9, 10, 11, 27, and 34. I've grouped these blocks together because all of them feature a square in the center that's turned on point. So there's some similar ways that they're put together, but you want to watch all of the instructions before you start on your blocks. And we're working not in numerical order. You want to do block 10 before you do block 9. And pay attention to the assembly instructions for block number 9 before you start 11. You also, if you invested in the Itty Bitty Eights ruler from Creative Grids, the one that has the eighth inch markings along the side, you're going to want to locate that ruler because it'll come in very handy for these blocks. These are precision pieced blocks, so you want to bring your A game for this month. So let's take a look at our June blocks. The first thing that you're going to notice about the sample blocks that I'm going to share with you is that I changed my color palette for this month. I was lucky enough to receive some sample cuts of Kim Deal's new line that's called Garnets and Gingham. Now this ships to quilt stores in July of 2024, depending on when you're watching this, but there are 24 pieces in the collection and I was lucky enough to get sample cuts for them. And when I saw them, I thought they were perfect for a red and cream Civil War quilt. So I've decided to make a series of blocks using just these fabrics and some reds from my stash to give it a more scrappy look. This collection also includes some pieces that have red and green together in them. So if you would like to get them and mix them into your multicolored quilts, they'll be perfect for that. But I think I'm going to see how many blocks I can make that will just be this Garnet and Gingham Shades. Now my background fabric that I've selected is a Timeless Linen Basic, also from Henry Glass, but it's by Stacy West. So you'll see the same tan cream linen texture show up in all of my blocks. Now I'm not just using this one fabric line. I like my quilts to look more scrappy, so I went through my red fabric stash and all of my scraps and pulled out anything that was in this more barn red shade in both a creamy background and in a red background. So you'll see some other pieces that are added into it. But these are absolutely beautiful and I couldn't wait to do something with them. So let's get to our June blocks. We're doing blocks 9, 10, 11, 27, and 34. But we're going to work in a little bit different order. The first one we're going to start with is block 10. This is the um, look, the page for block 10. And if you look at it, you can see it's nothing more than four quarter square triangles. I made mine following this diagram that's over here, but I put more light around the outside edge. This is my block, and you can see these are the pieces that I was talking about from Garnets and Gingham by Kim Deal. This is my Stacy West background fabric, and then this one's right out of my stash that I've had for a long time. Now, I'm keeping that lighter around the outside edge because I think I'm going to use dark sashing, so it'll be a three-piece sashing that has two darks and one light instead of the two lights and one dark. So this is my block for this month. When you look at your cutting instructions here, It'll say refer to your pattern pieces, sizes for the 8 or the 12. So if you're making the 8, those instructions remember on page 6 and 7 here. And you'll need one square of uh, four fabrics cut twice to make four triangles. This is one of those easy, easy blocks where you can um, increase the size of the squares as much as you would like. And then you're going to cut them, sew them back together again, and or make sure you've got your pieces arranged in the right order. But then you can square it up by measuring from the center out. If you're making the eight inch blocks, these would be four and a half inches raw edge to raw edge. And if you're making the 12 inch blocks, these would be 
six and a half inches raw edge to raw edge. That's the size you're squaring up to. Now how much you round up in your size is entirely up to you. Um, a quarter of an inch is usually uh, plenty for me when I round up, but some people like to do even more than that. So whatever makes you comfortable works. And it goes together as a four patch. Once you've got your four pieces together, you'll make four identical blocks and then rotate them so that it creates the pinwheel here. And then you'll sew it together, these two and these two, and then put those together as four. The next um, block in our June assortment is the Peace and Plenty block, which is number nine in your book. Now, um, I've marked this one with a pink tab. That's my little reminder to mention to you that if you're following along and you want to put your blocks in the exact same order as they are in the quilt that's featured on the cover, this block does not appear in that quilt. There are several in the book that are in the book but not in that quilt. And there are some, obviously, that are in the quilt that are not in the book. So if you're looking to figure out which position this one goes in, don't be worried if you can't find it. Now if you look at the two color illustrations for this particular block, you'll see that this one has many more fabrics in it than this one does. My preference was to go with this one, and I really like the way the pinwheel is highlighted in here. So I chose the darkest shade of red from the Garnets and Gingham collection to make my pinwheel. These two pieces are also from that collection, and this is my background fabric, this is the Stacy West Linen. The little print that's here, which actually has scissors on it, that's right out of my fabric stash. Now the construction of this block is a little bit different. It seemed completely logical to me after making block 10, which was quarter square triangles, to make this one in the exact same way. So you would make four quarter square triangles and put them together, and then you would make the outside edges and put those together. But what I discovered is it's very difficult to get the seams to nest and to know which direction to press. And as you know, if you've been working with the book, there are no assembly instructions in the book. So it's going to take a little bit of finagling for me to get these four blocks together into the block assembly. But I figured out in the next block a little bit easier way to do it. So if you watch my next block, which is block 11, then assemble block nine in the same order as you'll assemble block 11. To assemble number 11, the blockade block, we're going to work from the center out because I think this made more sense to put it together. But if you look at the pieces that I have here, they are the exact same pieces that I have in our other block, which is number nine. All I would have to do would be turn this so that I could create a pinwheel. Let's make it go the dark in the same direction here. So this block has two different fabrics in the center, but you can see there's a pinwheel in the center, triangles on the outside edge, and then half square triangles on the outside edge of that. So all I have to do here to assemble this is I'm going to put them together as a four patch and then add the triangles onto the corners and then add the triangles onto the corners. So that means I'll be building the block from the center out. And you can do the exact same thing with this block, which is number nine, and you're going to build a pinwheel in the center first, then sew these two together and put them on all four sides, and then sew your quarter square triangles together and put them on all four sides. And I think you'll be happier with the way that your seams lay because you'll be able to pinwheel them and press towards the dark in all of your areas. Block 27 is called the Sugar Bowl block, and it's clearly marked as one of the blocks that's in the miscellaneous design section. In other words, it's outside of the four patch or nine patch layout. This is also one that's not in the cover quilt. It's not in the quilt that's in the book, and it's not going to be in my quilt either. And the reason I'm choosing not to make this is because this large block right here in the center is one piece of fabric. So if you're making the um, 
eight inch blocks, then that's, it's about six inches of square of fabric. And then if you're making the 12 inch, it's like a nine inch square of fabric. So that's a whole lot of one fabric. If you're making all 50 blocks in the book and you're going to make this block, there's a few things that you need to pay attention to. Even though it's simple to put together, the arrangement of your fabrics is what makes the difference. So if I were to use this as my center square, which is just a square on point, and then I used these as my side triangles, you can see that the dark is here and the dark is here, and these are identical. But the ones that go on the opposite side have to be mirror imaged. And what I mean by that is that if I put an identical triangle on this side, see it does not make the base of the sugar bowl. It has to be the opposite direction. So they would, this would go here and here, and the darker ones would go here and here. So when you're sewing your quarter square triangles together, you have to make sure that they're in the right position. Just take your large square, sew them on opposite sides, press the seams, sew on opposite sides. In this case, I would press two seams in and two seams out. That will help them nest and they'll lay together perfectly for you. So if you're making the sugar bowl block, that's the way I would assemble it. Block number 34 is called Union Square. This block is where you really need to bring your A game. It looks like an easy block to put together, and it is, but it's the cutting that's different. You'll see in your cutting instructions that are down here that now we're into blocks where we need that eighth inch measurement. So if you've invested in your eighth inch, the itty bitty eighths ruler, so they have the eighth inch markings on them, you're gonna to wanna to pull this out and you'll be happy that you have it because the light squares and the dark squares for here are cut with the eighth inch measurements. Now the sizes that are here, um, these can be cut with your from strips just like we've been cutting all along. But to get this block on point and keep the points when you use your seam allowance, when if that's taken up, and make everything come out square, you really have to cut it the appropriate size. So using the itty bitty eights ruler so that you can cut those makes it easier. Now those same 1 8 markings are on your regular Creative Grids rulers as well, but they don't continue the whole way across. So it takes a little bit more um, precision cutting. You don't have a line to line up with on the regular rulers as you do with the eighth inch rulers. Now what if you don't have an eighth inch ruler or you just can't cut the eighths? I tried with my block to see, because the sizes are very similar, to see if I could do it just by cutting um, to make a six inch block to go here in the center. So a six inch finished block would be two and a half inch squares cut across. And then when you do it, you trim it down and you can see that they aren't perfectly square. The dark ones will be square the center will be larger than the two sides, but when you trim this block up, you have to trim from the center out. So you find the center of this block and trim two sides, and then find the other and trim two sides. That means you're working with a sixteenth of an inch measurement when you trim. So it might be worth it just to cut the size that's recommended in the book. So to follow along with the cutting instructions provided. Now when you trim it down, how do you know what size you're going to trim it down to? This is the exact same setup as the sugar bowl block. So if you refer back to uh, block 27, the size that they tell you to cut that center square is the size that you'll be cutting the trimming down your nine patch if you just do it using two and a half inch squares that are cut. But it's also a very easy assembly. Once you've made your nine patch and you get it to the right size, you're going to want to add the two triangles to either side of the square, press, trim all the dog ears as you go along. And then when you attach this triangle to here, 
I, you want to make sure it's centered. So this point and this point should line up with the center line here. And you can find that center line either by measuring and marking or just by folding your block in half, creating a crease so that this point lines up with the center line. I add opposite sides, press, and then come back and add opposite sides. And in this case, for this block, I pressed in towards the center. Normally I say, press in the path of least resistance, which there are two seams here, so you could press it out, but I prefer not to bend that point back, so I press it in towards the center. So that will complete your union square block. Here are my blocks for this month. This is block number 9, 10, 11, and 34. As I mentioned, I'm not making block 27 for my quilt, the sugar bowl block. Now, if you're including that in your quilt, that's perfectly fine. Pick an interesting fabric for that center large block. If you're not going to make it and you're going to be short a block for your quilt, you can consider making one of these blocks over again and rearranging the colors. Maybe changing the pinwheels so you have your light and your darks in different positions. You can create your own block to substitute for the sugar bowl if you're not including that one in your quilt.